Hello, hello. 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 Hey. Hello. Welcome. hello. Welcome to Art Party. Hey, Abby. How are you? Hey. Hi, June. Hi, Marjorie. Here's my friends. If you'd like, your camera icon is at the bottom corner of your screen. Feel free to turn that on. We can all pop in the chat where we're from. The chat is down there, too. Nice seeing the. Hello, hello. Hi, Anne. You there? Hi, everyone. We're gonna have a jewelry party. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the most fancy Tupperware party you can get. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Looking good, Paula. Oh, that looks great, Paula. Hey, Mawa, how's it going, June? Oh, it's hot, 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 but it's going good. <laughs> Marjorie and Basking Ridge. Mm. Jersey represent. We had Boy Scouts come and help wash our ambulances this morning. At least it was before the heat really got bad. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Hey, Carol. Oh, I should get my hat. <laughs> I like to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Massachusetts. Land oh, I, land 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 land. Land. Yay. All right. I love my hat. <laughs> it looks great. Thank you. Carla's dad is on. Yeah. It's got little carrots on it. <laughs> Come on. That's nice. It's good to cover up the windblown frizzy hair. Right. And that's our good for that. <laughs> Abby. So good to see everyone. I'll get started in about a second or two. Just give a couple more people a chance to settle in. If you want to settle in with your cameras. We love seeing your faces. So happy to see everybody. And I think I'm gonna get started. So nice to see everybody. I just wanna let you know as we get started, if anything should occur and the party, we have technical difficulties that shut down our party, we're gonna <coughs> pop an updated link into artpartycentral.org and that should be seamless as to us starting again should anything arise. And now without further ado, I love to toast everybody for being here. So if we could raise our glasses on this, warm lovely saturday night and say cheers to a jewelry party cheers, cheers. Yay, cheers. cheers. that's always good now my wonderful co-host is going to okay. mute everyone please don't be offended it is just zoom protocol and i am unmuted and ready to begin um I am Carla of Carla Gideon Art and Design, proud to be a co-founder of Art Party Central and so happy to be your host this evening. I make a line of original watercolors over etchings and goods and gifts for the home. And I am joined tonight by another Art Party Central co-founder, the lovely Sam Stone from Swan and Stone Millinery. And she could be found on her website at swanandstone.com. Tonight, we have six amazing jewelers. You're going to find many differences between them and threads and commonalities, and it makes for such a beautiful party. Our jewelers, talented jewelers today are Danielle Mirzada from Mirzada, Tracy Bleich from Bella Mode, Jennifer Lipman Bruno from Jennifer Lipman Bruno Design, Shana Croix from Shana Croix Jewelry, Lauren Cassenti from Lauren Cassenti Jewelry, and Lisa Jane Grant from Lisa Jane Grant Design. Let me tell you a little how this party is going to shake out. Each of the artists is going to give a presentation. Then as time allows, I'm going to ask them some questions that were previously submitted or some questions I find in the chat. At the end of the party, we are going to raffle off one $50 gift certificate to each of the artists' websites. So that's six different chances to win, but you have to be here, so stick around to the end. 
At that time, you'll also announce a coupon code good at all six of the artisans' websites, as well as my co-host sites, swanandstone.com and my website, carlagoodian.com. At that point, we'll open up for an after party with mingling and asking questions and be able to connect and join each other for a little bit of uh, after party stuff. But we're going to get right to our presentations today. And without further ado, I want to welcome the amazing Danielle Mersada. Danielle, take it away. Hey there, everyone. My name is Danielle. Thanks for the intro, Carla. And thank you also for wearing that um, necklace today. That's pretty awesome of you. That uh, piece that you just saw on Carla is a casting from the bark of a palm tree. And one of the things we do is take different organic textures and find amazing pieces of them, textures about them, and then copy those textures by making molds. And sometimes uh, that begins with plaster, other times it begins with silicone. And this is an example of a piece of this cedar branch cast in solid sterling. And then we've made, this is a very, um, it's a very easy to burn out. It's a very easy to make a pourable molds with. Um, and so we were able to, to take a copy of that and then make another mold of that metal copy to be able to make a book matched pair. And then these are sterling silver castings with gold bezels and rose cut raw diamonds. And then this earring that I have on here is made with sea fan coral. So I've taken a piece of coral and rebuilt the structure of that pattern into a teardrop shape. And this is a large bronze earring, super lightweight, very thin, but has a lot of impact. It has a two-tone black gold color to it. It's a black rhodium plated bronze earring polish to show this two-tone. Where this is a similar earring, similar earring, different size um, in solid 18 karat. This is an example of the coral that we begin with. And we'll take a small piece of this pattern, copy that, and then build a series of parts off of those carvings. One of my favorite textures to work with is a sweet gum fruit. I have a couple sweet gum lovers on here, I know. Um, and this, oh, I'm not wearing it anymore. This necklace here, you can see the connection maybe between this form and these pieces. The first step in working with this is to remove these spike forms. Because if we copied that, if we made a mold, a casting of this in metal, it would be like kind of weapon-like. It would be a very harsh um, texture. But then once we've sort of softened that out, I can cast that. And then this ring is made by taking a shape like this and two shapes that are made by slicing that fruit up. Um, and it's like a slice a carving and a slice fabricated together. And then we've taken a mold of that. So this is an oxidized sterling ring. It's one of my favorite rings. I click that on. It's a sweet gum smooth ring. And then this is an 18 karat solid gold copy of that same design. So when something is in our core collection, it means that we've decided that these are awesome things that we want to see again and again, that we want you to be able to think about. And when you're ready, we're ready for you. So they kind of wait in open edition. And then as you order, we make them for you. Um, we often don't have everything in stock, but we're excited about reproducing those pieces whenever it's right for you. Here's an example of a sterling silver version of that ring where we've added I don't know if the light's catching this at all. We've added some blue sapphires. How am I doing, Carla? Is that, can you see the color at all? I actually do. You do, okay, great. Um, so those are all rose cut sapphires. They're really soft on the bottom. Every setting is custom and that's done in 14 karat gold and then set in this sterling ring. So it has a completely different attitude. This like pale blue and white versus this aggressive dark and white versus a solid 18. But that concept of being able to take the same form that we think is so great and then show it in a bunch of different ways at a bunch of different price points um, with a bunch of different attitudes is kind of a fun way that we've built the collection. So when you approach our work, some of it's very sweet. This is a bronze casting of a piece of lace. This is a series of sterling castings of lace. Somebody at an earlier event asked if this would go in the hair. Um, and then this is a solid 18 karat gold version of the lace piece that I have on. That's kind of a lovely, light, like gentle attitude. And something like this takes the same concept of our work made out of morel mushrooms and has a much tougher feeling to it. It's like a very different approach to the work. 
this is the bark from a palm tree. So the same bark that Carla is wearing on her neck. Carla, that piece also, I think, has some, you know, like a real attitude to it. Like it's very romantic in some way that it kind of approaches the collarbones, but it's it's saying like, don't mess with me very much. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, that's what I love about your work because I do love the don't mess with me, or as I would say, don't mess with me, you know, factor. But I also don't want to lose that femininity and that soft and this is curved in such a way that it really sits so nicely. I do really care about that, the way the work fits on your body, um, the way that an earring kind of invites, like you have this, you've got so much real estate here. Like how can I acknowledge all the different ways that a woman is shaped or man, but really it's, I generally have a customer base of women. Um, there's so much that can happen in the space between here and here. How can we really make that like, how can we go to the edges of that in yet jewelry that's still pretty wearable? That's very fun for me. Also, like, really figuring out, like, how does the wrist really work? What, is it, what does it really want? This is a bracelet. Um, if you're on my newsletter, maybe you saw this today with a pink sapphire in it. This is the petals of a peony, and every connection there is a five-part hinge, and it fits very much like a watch. So the number of links that we put in this is dependent very much on exactly how you want your watch band feeling piece to feel. My mom always likes to have it a lot longer. She washes her hands like 80 times a day. I like my bracelets to be a lot tighter and we would just make that to build, you know, build a suit. This is kind of cool. This is a petal that's like folded. And so a box clasp is built into the center of that petal. I'm a little bit proud of that. Um, <laughs> within- I love that, you know, and I've used the expression before, brain real estate, as in I'm running out of it. But I never think of it the way you phrase it as the real estate of both your body and the real estate of the negative space surrounds your body. Like it's such an interesting way to think about it as the space between the neck and the ear is real estate. I just love that, Danielle. And acknowledging how different our bodies all are. So like I, we've actually had a little broad conversation before everybody hopped on. And the difference of being like a smaller chested woman and a larger chested woman and how a necklace falls on you, it really matters. And we independently all know that, but when we are shopping, you know, or like at an art party, like I might not talk about, it would be a little bit weird to be like, oh, you're really large breasted. This is gonna look amazing on you. But there is something, <laughs> We all actually have some thoughts. Something really about. beautiful about being able to say that too, and just being out there and acknowledging that we're all beautiful, you know, big or small. <laughs> Somebody in the chat is asking to see my necklace up close. So while you're talking and showing that one that I'm in love with, I'm also going to show more. Um, I have one chat. for you, Carlos, just so you know, this is in stock. So this is made with two wings of the same like two castings of the same carving so this wing shape here is cast from this bark this is a bark from a palm tree from key west florida where my dad lives and we've taken this is a really large casting of that you can see one piece here and they've taken a mold of that book matched it for the other side and then here similarly taken a mold of that you can see this piece. Do I have a palm stud earring somewhere? Could you grab that for me? Um, this, you know, while you're looking for it, we can bring it back at the after party because we are going to have to move on. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry. Bye. But I do have to say that big one you're wearing, you know, that makes me crazy. You know, I just love that so much. Yeah, I can do the help, Carla. Thank you so much. Bye. And we're going to move it on to Tracy. Tracy, take it away now. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday evening. My name is Tracy Blythe. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I design and make jewelry uh, uh, under my brand Bella Moda. And I actually, I import a lot of the anodized aluminum, as you can see that I'm wearing here. But I like to implement hand beading and uh, cold connect metalsmith with uh, my work. Um, here's an example of my hand beading with the, um, the anodized aluminum bead. And I hand bead with a gemstone called uh, hematite. And I love the feel of it. It's very smooth um, and it's very luxur luxurious. As you can see the tone here. And sorry, if you hear a lot of rain, it gets thunderstorming outside. <laughs> but then these are the... Uh, earrings you can see the earrings here and then I also make my um my ear wires and I 
I designed uh, with a, a modern look, a lot of edges, but I also like simplicity. I don't know if you might think my jewelry is simple, but I feel that it's, it's simple in form. And I put um, the matte uh, brass gold beads at the bottom, but, um, but the, the top is gold fill, 14 karat gold fill. And you can see I use a, um, a flat brick stitch for these earrings. And you see how they fold here. They're very um, lightweight, I believe. And I also made a bracelet to go with this. And then for, for the bracelet, I put a um, magnetic clasp so you can easily, you know, put it on, don't have to fumble with it. And I always love working with uh, the blue hematite. I think I can make this as a pendant as well, <laughs> but uh, I love working with the hematite and I love mixing the uh, rich colors. So here's another example of adding the uh, anodized aluminum, but this is glass. And as you can see, I have a structural look here. I named this um, hourglass. So I use several different techniques here. Um, yes, it's still a, a flat brick stitch. And then I did a triangular stitch. And then I have gold filled uh, beads here. And I just like the, uh, the symmetry and the geometric of um, those designs. Here's the hourglass in another color. Sometimes when I use so much color, I like to, uh, I guess, bring, bring the color down with a muted color. So here's an anodized aluminum. Anodized aluminum, the, the finish for it is, is satin and it's sort of matte satin and it's very smooth and the colors are very rich is very soothing to the eye, to my opinion. And um, as you can see here, it, it really complements with all the beads that I use, the, 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 the gemstones or the glass, the colors, uh, fortunately, <laughs> you know, match very well. Uh, here's an example as, you know, the, the blue in these earrings, it matched very well with the, this anodized aluminum, which is, I call it, I name it denim. As you can see, it's the same tone of blue. Um, and um, yeah, and so, so here's an example of my Cold Connect Metal Smith. I just, uh, I love making my own, uh, you know, different shapes to, to make it an interest to, uh, to my metal work. And here's uh, something I've done here. It's very simple, but it has anodized aluminum. So you can add any, uh, anodized bead color, as you can see here, some necklaces here with this type of earring. So here's another shape of the earring, sorry, around anodized aluminum with a very, I think it's modern, it's kind of a, on the large side, side, but it's very um, lightweight earrings or that design. I love that, Tracy. Tracy. I could see your work for like bridal parties or a modern bride. Do you have something in particular you want to suggest for that? Well, I think uh, modern uh, brides love to, they, they like to be stylish, but then again, they, they probably want to keep it kind of traditional as well. But for me, I would uh, layer the necklaces as, I don't know if you guys are familiar with my open circle collection, but I have hand beaded uh, design here for the open circle. And it, on, on my website, you will see um, different colors of the, the, the beads to go with um, the, I don't know, I call this the hand beaded triangle open circle. So, so with that open circle, you can make, oops, sorry, you can layer because I have different uh, length for the open circle. And um, this is the mini, this is the large, but then I have two um, necklace length in between these two sizes. With that, and also, I think a modern bride will love a piece like this, which is uh, on my website. You can buy this in with different 
the different chain lengths, but I designed this particular one. I now I have the chain um, tangle uh, very close to the neck. And I mean, you can wear it like this or you can tie it like this, or you can wrap it double wrap, or you can, yeah, like this close to the neck. I think it's re very sexy when you do it that way. Yeah, so that would be to me for a modern bride. I love that. And I love that you showed us your open circle because that to me, I know you've talked about it before. It's one of your most meaningful. Yes, it is. It is. I have a uh, different, um, I make the open circle with different um, pendant finish. This is the oxidized. And then I have gold fill and then I have silver fill. But on the website, you can mix match any finish, even um, antique silver, rose gold. Uh, yeah, a gold chain with the black pendant, which is oxidized and, or gold pendant with sterling or gold chain with silver pendant. And you know, we keep talking about like the things all women have in common and the open circle is, I could see that being so meaningful for each of us because we're unfinished and we are, you know, curvy and we have this place that's still open to new experiences and everybody. I love that. And can you tell us a little more about what inspires you to design in our, your last minute? Uh, what inspires me to design is um, actually uh, objects like uh, architectural uh, buildings or nature actually. And also things that just happens in our lives, whether it's uh, no social issues or whatever. And it's sometimes, you know, I'm kind of crazy. I wake up in the middle of the night and I see an image and I'm like, oh my God, that would be a, a very nice design. So sometimes I try not to wake my husband and I, I, I draw the design on a sheet of paper then then try not to, you know, wake him like I just said. Yeah, just things just, just come to me, nature, uh, architecture. So I, I love design. So inspiration just comes from a lot of different places for me. Well, we have to move it on to Jennifer, but I think the privilege of being married to a designer such as yourself should be you get to wake him up and say, write this idea <laughs> down for me, write it down. I had a good one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. There we go. We're gonna take it on to Jennifer. Hi everyone, I am Jennifer from Jennifer Lippman Bruno Design. Um, I know so many of you now, so I'm gonna keep it very brief how I got to where I am today. Went to college pre-med psych major, graduated art history major, studied jewelry design for two years. After that, one in Philly, one in New York. I stayed in New York. I became the design director for a high-end jewelry designer. I was there for five years. They decided to close, so I went to my second love, which is knitting, and so I designed accessories and patterns for hand knitters, had that for over 10 years, sold that, and went back to my true love. And so a fun little tidbit for everyone who knows the spiel already is I ran the New York City Marathon once, never again. So when I decided to go back to jewelry, I knew I wanted to do something different, so I started with the sterling silver and the concrete. All of these pendants are reversible. So if you see a sheet of silver, when you flip it, it's gonna be reverse. They act like little bowls that hold the concrete. Some of them are exactly the same on both sides. And then sometimes I get funky and I added some alligator skin. So you can either have it very exotic and fancy, or you could just be a little more subtle on another day. So those are some pendants. Um, with the earrings, um, everyone's always concerned with the weight. Concrete is porous, so it's very lightweight, li lighter than resin, than stones. So I don't wear heavy. I don't expect anyone else to wear heavy. So even the larger ones are really doable for every day. And the posts I normally put lower, so it sits higher and it's really, it's balanced and comfortable all day. And then just remember these guys, don't tell everyone else they're my favorite, but just remember those for in a moment. So unlike the earrings, which are small-ish, my rings, I tend to go very big and bold. So again, I started with all sterling silver and concrete. 
Um, a lot of them, I call them an elevated bubble gum band with the little split shank. Um, so it's just your hands bigger. So you just can go a little more hefty and you get to see it all the time. So I like to look at something nice and chunky and big. So after doing that, I decided I needed a little bling. I, I like my diamonds. Now they're little diamonds, but they're fun. So I decided to add the diamonds to the silver and concrete. Again, it has the same fun band. And <clears throat> so this one, this one, it's just different pebble shapes with three little diamonds. This one is a randomness ring. It has the five diamonds. It also comes in three or seven. Um, and then here's another version. This is the orphan. He's the little bad one that blew, so I get him. But I have this style and just the one. And it's just a lot of funky, funky rings. So after doing, adding the diamonds, I upped the ante one more and I started introducing 14 karat gold with the concrete and the diamonds. So now these styles, they sit nice and flat. They don't twist, so they are not reversible. This little one does dance. So we just put a diamond on both sides. So it always looks stunning. So with summer coming into play, we're going a whole nother route now. Um, many of you knew that, know that I did an earring challenge on Instagram. It was a 21 day earring challenge. You have to do 21 pairs in 21 days. So I pushed myself to do French hooks and <clears throat> cause that's what everyone's asking for. So that was the direction I went here. And now that being said, um, just, so you know, I always like to work one-on-one -on -one with people. So I happen to have a pair of earrings that a customer who is here, this was the style that she absolutely loved, but she said she wanted a little bit of concrete and diamonds and silver showing. So, drum roll, oh, you like this lady. So here are the earrings. So it is concrete and sterling silver. Uh, when she said she wanted the pink concrete, my heart beat pitter pattered because the pink is my favorite. It's so feminine and pretty on everyone. And so with the pink, we did pink diamonds. So it's the French hook in the back, again, is filled. So it looks beautiful front and back. And so I just want to get it back in here. Just want to let you know that all of these pieces that you see can be adjusted to your liking. Oh, and the whole point, I forgot to show you these guys. In the gold, this was supposed to lead up to that. But so these are my favorite shape and they come in the square, the pair and the rectangle and I'm wearing the circle. But again, you can decide on the color. So here is that pink with the pink diamond. And then I do the gray blue and we can do like with the gray diamond. And then the white I do with the brown because it's, it's so subtle. But for me, I'm very into color. It's like when I was knitting, I was into color. And this, I'm into color. It's like those tiny little nuances. I you know, get really Jennifer, picky about. I, first of all, I just love the, again, another tie-in that the pink concrete, like you're taking something uber tough, like concrete and a little and bit. Softening and softening it. And then you're softening it. And it's that same blend we were talking about before that are mm -hmm. all the size of a woman. There is a fabulous question in the chat that I am going to yes. read directly because I want, it's such a good question. I want to ask it exactly the way it was asked by Marjorie. Yes. Concrete looks so smooth and refined. Is this architectural concrete or something closer to dental cement? It is specifically for jewelry. So it's very, very fine. And then it's the way I treat it afterwards. I sand it, make it smooth, sand all the sides. I put a sealant to make it, since it's porous, to make it a little more, to make it durable. Um, yeah, it's just, it's the quality of it. That's fantastic. And if somebody wanted to see you live, now that things are opening up, is there an opportunity? If you want to fly down to Chicago next week, and I would love to see you. So I'm in um, the Old Town Fair, Old Town Art Fair, which is in downtown Chicago. 
Um, I've heard amazing things about it. I was supposed to be in it last year, obviously like everything else not happening. So I'm very excited to, uh, to get out there and meet people. So I encourage you to come, be all vaccinated and come. Our party you, uh, goes come. to Chicago live with Jennifer. Yeah. I love that. That's such a great idea. We can, <laughs> we'll all get on plane together. <laughs> and with that, we're gonna save some questions for the after party. And we're going to bring it on to Shana. Shana, take it away. Well, hello, everyone. So good to be here. Um, so tonight, I'm going to um, change my focus a little bit. I'm going to talk a lot about my silver and gold pieces, although I did wear one of my colorful enamels. This is um, my red translucent, and I'm wearing these red translucent pods. But the colors always get so much attention on these art parties. I wanted to give a little attention to my um, silver and gold line because it's really great, especially now in the summer with wanting to wear really lightweight pieces. Um, they work really well. So we're gonna start with this tray of earrings. Um, so the earrings are um, all super lightweight and um, they're all hollow. So no matter how big you go, like even with a pair, like whoops, yeah, a pair like this, that's real, these are really big when you wear them, they literally weigh nothing. And they're so flattering on the face. The way that I design my pieces, though everything's sort of reminiscent from aquatic sea life forms and natural forms, I really take the female body into account. So I really want everything, if you notice, like even with these earrings, the way the curve turns towards the face. So it pulls us up and accentuates um, our, our you know, our feminine form. So here you can see a lot of these earrings, again, all super lightweight. I work in this 20, uh, 18 karat um, vermeil gold over sterling silver, and the gold is really heavy. I've been doing um, this line for over 12 years and I've never had, you know, not, not, I have earrings that I wear all the time, they don't wear. I do everything with white gold posts, and then all these earrings can be done with clips as well. So I really try to, you know, I try to make things comfortable and versatile and workable for us because I'm a big believer in being really fabulous, but super comfortable so we can enjoy our lives. Um, and so that brings me to my sort of iconic Shana Croix earring, which is a double-sided um, earring. And this is a super large, this is my large Baroque. And these are oxidized silver, again, with the white gold posts. And it's just uh, patina over sterling silver. And actually, as they wear, they get even the silver sort of brightens through and they get, uh, they sort of shine up a little bit. And this pair is really fun because they look great um, either forwards or backwards. So I'm going to flip it around for you guys so you can see the difference. Uh, the double sided, you know, I designed it, I think. 12, 12, this is what just got me to go into craft shows because before I did the double-sided earring, I just did big major sort of one-of-a-kind art pieces. And then I came up with this double-sided earring um, and they were just so popular and women were loving them so much. And I was like, I could do a craft show. And that's when I sort of started making things for everyone. And I have to tell you ladies that I just love that so many people wear my work and enjoy it. And um, so I've gotten much more involved in these limited production pieces. So the pair that I just put on here is my smallest. So this is probably my largest and this is my smallest and this is a teeny swoop. And I don't know if you can see there's little CZs on here. Um, so I can do them with stones or without. And then of course I do everything that you're seeing. I also do in the enamel colors. I usually do, I'll do one half in the color this is a really gorgeous, I don't know if you can see the color. It's a really beautiful um, cobalt blue and it's got a texture to it and it's the exact color of lapis. So it's really rich, uh, it looks great with the, um, it looks great with the, with the gold. And I have lots of different shapes. This is my, my swirl. If you go on the website, they all have names and, um, and they you know range in size. So I'm gonna show you my last sort of grouping of earrings. You'll, I feel like earrings are really big in the summer because it's hot and they don't touch your body at all. Um, so I do a lot, like I always wear earrings. So these are all my elongated crescent pods and the 
these are newer, so they're they have the beaded crescent pod, so there's more uh, movement to them. And then I scale down to a really teeny, and I'll show them both on. Um, a really teeny size. So my new teeny crescent pod, and I just think these are so lovely, and they're just like, I mean, you can sleep in them. They're so um, lightweight that you can't even feel them when they're on. But it's just a nice little elegant pop. Um, and I do them in all the colors and in 18 karat gold. And then of course a, um, and then with the, lar the large beaded, so you can see the, the range in scale and size. And this is my green enamel with 24 karat gold that's been fused onto the surface. And so you get this really rich, um, I'm really into this rich gold. You'll see it in a lot of my pieces. You can see and it in this. Shane, yep. if somebody wanted a specific color with that enamel, it seems like you have such a great palette. Can you, I, you know what I have? I could do any color in the rainbow. I have access to every color you could possibly imagine. I have to keep limiting myself, but like this orange was a request from a client that one, she had me do a bracelet for her in orange and um, gold. And I loved it so much that I just added it to my line. So I keep doing that. And, you know, my booth is just get it's just growing and growing with colors. But I love to work with people and I love doing um, individual color consults. Oh, yeah. Orange is one of those braver colors. And then when you wear it, it's just so unique and it has, yeah. It, it a gets a lot of, it gets a lot of attention. I'll just show you these rings because these are, mo I have like, these are, like I do a lot in the turquoise. I've just added the orange and my pinks, I have a range of pinks. So I have like everything from a hot pink to a medium pink to a pale pink. Um, and then I do a lot in this white and gold, which I'm going to show you here. The white and gold palette, which Ooh, is yes. Gorgeous for some. It's and while so you're good. At it, can you show us one of your rings on a finger, please? Yep, of course. So this is the cross finger ring, and that's in the green. Um, oh, the white is so good. I have to show you white because everyone should have one for summer. I think it's the best ring I do right now for summer, and oh. it's just so fun. And they're super comfortable. Um, because it actually doesn't stick up at all in your hand. And the two parts that cross over your fingers, they just sit there really easily. Um, very sculptural and really a statement piece. Yeah, and that swoop is so delicious. And it's like, it's like luxe. And I, I think I was telling you earlier, like I could so see with your chunky bracelets and your rings going to a cocktail party and just holding something and not wanting to move from this position so everyone sees your ring and your bracelet the entire party. Shana. No, I always say my jewelry is not for the lady that doesn't want to get noticed. So if you want to walk in a room and be fabulous, mm -hmm. you know, I'm the, I'm the one. <laughs> not for the faded flower. Anyway, I yeah. can't wait. I want you to show us your chunky bracelets um, when we come back to the yep. party. Thank you so much for an amazing, inspiring presentation. And let's okay. take it on to Lauren. Lauren. Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you are here in my art studio in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, this is my showroom, my workspace is over here. And um, yeah, I'm gonna jump in and start showing you guys some of my pieces. Um, so you are looking at sterling silver hand forged, um, rings and this piece is silver with tourmaline this one's done with moonstone aquamarine they're all one of a kind um creative pieces some of my inspiration comes from um nature and i was explaining in the earlier show how i love this idea of like when you see a tree root that has taken in a a stone or a brick and, or um, like a metal fence and it's kind of like curling over. I think that that's just like so beautiful. I was showing this ring as well. Um, this one is a cast piece in sterling silver. And I was like very inspired by this 
phone book. I mean, who sees a phone book nowadays? Anyways, this phone book in the middle of the street that was rained on and the pages were just like splayed out and dried up. And I love that, that idea. Um, I'm gonna show you guys this more uh, stone centric pendant here. This is aquamarine. And I love that like really kind of cool, icy tone that the aquamarine offers. So pretty for summertime. One of my newest pieces in my art studio that I finished this week is, let me get these rings off. <laughs> this, this piece right here. So this is a stone called Ideo, Idocrass or Ideocrass. Um, it's this really beautiful olive tone. And I set that in this melted silver tube with this stationary silver chain band. I love like kind of layering, um, layering different textures in my pieces. And um, this is another fun one that is relatively new in my collection. So this is handcrafted chain with this um, kind of peach, peach tourmaline. And it's just like a really bright, juicy, beautiful stone. I've really been into um, the cabochon cut stones, like super smooth. I don't know, there's just something to me that's more mystical about that. Like you can kind of just like see all of the details in the stones. Um, and so I think it's fun to show some of my tools in my art studio because people always hear like, oh, this is hand forged and handcrafted. And, you know, unless you're coming into art studios, you don't really necessarily know what that means. So um, this is the anvil that I hand forge everything on. And you can see that it is all pitted and corroded. I chose this anvil at an antique market because it, I'm able to like pick up the, those textures onto the metal. I start off with um, flat sheet metal, super smooth round wire. And what I'm doing is really just trying to mess it up as much as possible and like get all those really like rich hammer marks in there, um, make it look very corroded. And then I start working with it and like, it's my process. I feel like I sit down at my workbench and it's just kind of more like dreamy and I don't necessarily sit down and like sketch something out. I just put pieces together and it kind of like comes along. Um, I'm gonna show you guys some of my, my chains, which I am pretty known for. So this piece here is an example of my newest brass and sterling silver chain. Um, it's super lightweight. These are like very flat units and I love this like really like big expressionistic clasp. It's this kind of like half and half, half like round larger links mixed with this double layered longer link section here. That's a really fun one. Um, the piece that I'm wearing now oops, uh, <laughs> is a mix of a few different, like, I guess, kind of shapes or like units that I make, such as this um, oval hammered piece mixed with this um, kind of like skeleton key style piece and like the melted tubes and it's on a kind of more like thin, simple chain here. I love that. 
You know, Lauren, I just love that you're taking something so traditional, like the woman wearing a chain around her neck and making it so completely new and different. And each link has such depth and personality to it. And I can yeah. see one or stacks and then, you know, and then I learned your story today about the phone book pages. I know, and, yeah. And the way an artist's mind like yours finds something beautiful in a wet phone book to me is I just think you have to see like the beauty in every single day like you leave your house like I live in Boston so I, I take the tea and I'm walking a lot and I I just every little detail and like the crevice of the sidewalk it's to me important just to like feel that and see that I, mm -hmm. well me personally would like to spend a few days just living inside your brain because I think you're a very happy and beautiful place it's pretty dreamy and spacey but yes <laughs> and in terms of getting time with you in person do you do you take on commission work I do I love to work with customers um you know I I ask someone to look at my work and tell me what it is they like in each piece like what type of texture they like in a ring band and you know I can show you different stones that I have in stock and we can kind of play and you know mix some stuff together and see some samples um I think that that's a really fun way to come up with a custom design absolutely um you know, I've done that over Zoom, over email, or uh, in person too. Well, I know there's more questions in the chat and for the after party. That went. Thank you, Carla. Fast. In fact, yeah, the first five presentations flew by, which brings us to somebody that's going to round up our evening together. And I can't wait for you all to see Lisa Jane Grant. Lisa, you have to unmute. You've got the Carla thing going for you. Obviously, I don't want you guys to hear me because I, I seem to mute myself all of the time. <laughs> Hi, my name's Lisa Jane Grant. I'm the last one to present tonight. So thank you for staying with us. Um, my medium of choice is Mokumegane, translating to wood grain metal. And the reason it's wood grained is because I will take somewhere around 20 to 30 layers of different colors of gold and silver, put them under heat and pressure, and then they bond as one block of metal. And then what I do is I carve into those layers to bring out the pink golds and the silvers and the yellow golds. And then I roll it out and it creates a wood grain type of metal. And I can show this to you and it'll explain it a little bit. This is what I call my South America pendant. It is on a palladium white gold and sterling silver mokume with 18 karat yellow gold accents. And you can see that patterning in there. Usually I leave my mokume as the major portion of my design and then I accent with stones. So these have apricot sapphires, yellow diamonds and white diamonds. And the back of it is in 18 karat yellow gold. So if it flips around, it's still really pretty on the other side. Everything is named after a place I have traveled to. And I have a travel problem. I've been to more countries and I know what I can count. And I usually grab my backpack and go for about six weeks to a country I don't know the language or I don't know the culture and just explore. Um, one of my pieces that I really love and that was really, really special to me because it inspired a line of different um, pieces is my Nirogongo pendant and my Nirogongo bracelet. If any of you have been following the news right now, the name Nirogongo might be familiar to you. So this piece here is in pink gold and yellow gold, palladium white gold with apricot sapphires. The chain is in pink gold and the back is in pink gold. And all of these swirls are in different colors of gold as well. Nirogongo is one of the only active volcano lakes in the world. It's located in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And I was there a few years back and spent two nights um, at the mouth of the volcano um, with the National Geographic crew who were doing some filming. Um, it recently erupted in the last couple of weeks and um, uh, there was a lot of devastation. But I absolutely love the experience being there. The people in the Congo 
well, couldn't be kinder. And these are actually some earrings right here that also came from that. So the lava flowing with all the pink and yellow gold, the apricot sapphires on the bottom with the oxidized sterling silver of the cold lava, and then the pink and the yellow lava from, from the volcano from there. Um, my work uses a lot of small little details, um, which I really kind of like. So I use a lot of delicate chains. This piece is again in the palladium white gold and sterling. And I'm going to move this necklace out of the way. It's on white gold and sterling silver chain with little diamond accents. Let's see if you can see this. So it kind of has a layered look to it. And what I like about this piece is that each little chain connection has been soldered into a tiny little gold tubing. So it has really delicate little details everywhere. One thing I love to do for people is um, I like to create stories from their travels. Many times people want a reminder of what, where they've been and what they've done. And so I take um, a travel experience and I always make sure that it tells a story. So I showed you the um, South America pendant. Where'd that go? These are, all, these are the countries that I, I have traveled to in South America. So Chile, Patagonia, um, Colombia, Bolivia. Um, and so I'm able to tell that story. This one, let me put that on black again or on white. This one here, if I can get this to show up. How's that, you guys? Can you see that? Yep. So this one here is from some time that I spent in a chimpanzee habituation reserve in Uganda. I was there for a few nights and we just spent our time with the chimpanzees. And they would have this thing, this crazy frenzy where they would drop down from the trees and go running past you. One of them just slapped me in the rear end and um, they're big, they're about up to here on me. But these little black diamonds are the chimps hanging from the trees. The mokume up here with all the pink and the yellow gold, that is the sky above with all the clouds. The pink gold perimeter is the Kabali National Forest. And um, all these peridots and garnets down here are the bushes and the short trees that the chimps fall down into. So if you have um, a place that you love to spend time in, or if you have a travel experience that you want to put into jewelry, let me know. I'd be glad to um, create a story for you in, ju in jewelry. So that's kind of what I do. That to me is the most remarkable thing because it is such a, it, it's so lyrical and there's such a narrative going on with each of your pieces. And yet it's beautiful on its own, even when you don't know the story, but it just takes it up that extra notch into, I'm just dying. I love it so much. And Thank the piece you. for wearing, tell us a little more about that. The piece I'm wearing, yeah. the piece that I'm wearing right here is called my Yosemite Half Dome Necklace. Let me see if I can get this in here. So my Yosemite Half Dome Necklace, um, it's Yosemite National Park. It's the first place that I went rock climbing. And so they have ladders and they have ropes and they have all different things to help you get up there. So these basically, these tusks and oxidized sterling silver remind me of the um, railings and everything. And then the Mokume piece is an 18 karat yellow gold, palladium white gold and sterling are some of the steps in the rocks. And then there are 18 karat yellow gold pieces here. The little diamonds are just a pretty little accent. And then I have 18 karat yellow gold on the back. And can you tell us a little bit, I know you have a new line and I also know within that line, there are some pieces specifically for I hate to be gendered, but men, and you know, can you tell us about that Damascus steel? Absolutely. I have a few pieces right here that I can show you. Let me just pop them off their displays. And so Damascus steel is similar to Mokumegane, except that it's bulletproof. It is made from stainless steel. So by being made with two different types of stainless steel, whereby you etch one out to show a relief pattern, 
Let's see if you can see this very well. Are you guys able to see that very well? I think that's great. Yeah. yeah. So that's a cuff bracelet and I'm making a whole series of those cuff bracelets. Um, this is, I'm gonna put these on because I think they're gonna look nicer on. This is a men's wedding band that I'll put on to my thumb. So 18 karat yellow gold bands right here with the stainless steel that has been etched. And then there's this piece here, which doesn't fit onto those fingers. <laughs> but this one's a very, very comfortable one. Let me take this one off here and I'll show you. What I really like with this one, this is definitely a unisex ring. It's quite wide here and it can be made in any width that you want, very narrow in the back so that when you crunch your hand up, you're not creating a callus on the bottom of your finger. If a guy is a golfer or I water ski a lot. So by holding the rope, I'll callus my fingers really badly. Um, but it doesn't allow that to happen. And thank it, you. yep. Oh, thank you so much. And okay. I'm gonna come back and hear a little more about that. I do love the unisex idea because I do like a wide band ring. I think that's so great. I wanna thank our artists. Um, for really sharing with us today. And I feel like you all really let us in to your process and your minds and your beautiful work. And I'm for one, I'm very grateful that we had the chance to hear it. And I also wanna thank everybody who came to the party and are supporting handmade and artisans and the amount of engineering and work and skill and level that goes into creating these beautiful things that you're wearing for us and modeling that make us all so, so happy. So without further ado, um, you need some rewards. So we're going to move to our raffles and I'm going to pass it on to my amazing co-host Sam to announce our winners for today. Hi everyone. Thanks, Carla. That was such an awesome party. Um, we do have some winners here. Um, I welcome you all. If you would like to unmute yourselves at this point, um, I am going to announce winners. So how can we contain our joy and enthusiasm and a, a whoop here and there? Um, so before I do announce the winners, however, if you wouldn't mind, if you do hear your name as a winner of one of the gift certificates, you can just pop your email in the chat. Um, and if you don't want to, uh, put it in the, um, in the chat to everyone, you can send it to admin Swan and Stone Millinery. So that's me. Um, anyway, that is how we get your gift certificate to you is by email. So let me go ahead and do it. Um, so for uh, Merzada, our first gift certificate winner is Daryl Fella. Congratulations, Daryl. Congratulations, Daryl. Um, for Vela Mode, we have Dottie Yasek Matulis. Congratulations, Dottie. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dottie. Uh, Jennifer Lipman Bruno Design, Kathleen Anderson. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> um, Shana Croy's jewelry. Sorry, I'm making sure I'm reading everything in order. Shana Croy's jewelry, we have Nancy Merriman. Yeah. Yay. Lauren Pacenti Jewelry, Frederica Woolman. Oh, whoa, yay. Yay. <laughs> um, and then finally, Lisa Jane Grant Design, Sherry Kogan. Congratulations, yay. Sherry. So thanks everyone for coming and uh, uh, congratulations to the winners. And I'm gonna hand it back over to you, Carla. I also would like to congratulate the winners and I'm going to congratulate all of you because you are all leaving wheels feeling like a winner. You get a 10% off coupon code to all six jewelry artisans websites, as well as my amazing co-host site, swanstone.com and my website, Carla. I'm getting ready to unmute in a second. Oh, <laughs> so, Please enjoy going shopping on all our websites. And the code for that discount is ART6, P-A-R-T-Y, 5, ART6, Party 5. 
And you'll get all that in an email with the link, direct links to all our websites as well at the end of the party. But if you want to start now, again, it's Art 6 Party 5. So we have one more day of parties next week on Saturday. And that is Maricol Bijou, Suzanne Schwartz Jewelry, Jara Lodge Jewelry, Megan Patrice Riley Jewelry, Eileen Schwartz Jewelry, and Shepherd's Run Jewelry. So if you haven't figured it out yet, it is another jewelry extravaganza, which we are all enjoying so much. At this time, I want to take a minute to thank APC co-founder and my friend and my co-host, Sam Stone, popping all those links in for everybody, making it shoppable, monitoring your questions. Thank you, Sam, for being an amazing co-host. And once again, I just want to thank everybody for being here, both artisans and party goers alike. It was my sheer joy to be your host today. And at this point, any of you that are busy and have to go, we understand. But those of you that want to stay for the after party, please unmute yourself. Just go for a question right now. We'll be quiet. So if you have one, you can don't be shy. Just shout it out. Otherwise, you can put it in the chat and we'll see it and we'll ask you questions. Anybody have a question they'd like to ask? Watch for dinner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> that note, I do have a question that I picked up from the chat. For I have, I also, yeah. So go ahead. I have, I wrote down all the chat questions, but go ahead. Oh, good. Um, has one too, right? On the, open shirts, on the open circle necklaces, are the chains adjustable lengths? Um, well, for the open circle necklaces, I make them 16 inches with a two inch extender, but you can uh, on my site get any length you want. They're not adjustable, but you can order them on um, different lengths. Oh, great. And can you also show us you showed us the beaded feather. Can you show us what it uh, looks like on that lariat? Oh, the yeah, this yes, okay. Show you on the on the bus? No, on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let me take this off the um, other necklace. But yeah, like I said, um, this is the shorter length. Well, it's, it's tangled here, but this is the shorter length because I wanted it close to my neck, but you can order it a uh, different length. And I just think that the shorter length um, give, gives it a sexy vibe. Okay. And it has, yeah, it has the, um, it has the um, hematite hand beaded uh, flat brick stitch and then the um, anodized aluminum. But yeah, this is uh, like 34 and I think you can order up to 40 and then you can you can wear it you know loose like that or you can wear it like this and it has a, a bit of a weight to it which I like you know you can wear it like this I probably would just wear it like this because that's just who I am <laughs> but you can you know easily fold it like that see I'm wearing my summer t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> great <But> yeah <laughs> and and is smoking hot and so are you and I think oh, yeah. Sam has a whole bunch of questions at, that I missed. So I'm going to ask Sam. Which so you... I, I do not have a whole bunch of questions. However, <laughs> um, I am. Oh, there you are, Lauren. Sorry, I was looking for you and could not find you. So um, <laughs> just I, I sort of loved this question, um, Lauren, because it's so perfect coming from Danielle Merzada. <laughs> Wanted to know if um, if you ever use the sidewalks for your texture. So I guess that's either as like, you know, how yes. I was thinking of how Danielle does her work, but do you ever use the sidewalk for your textures? Yeah, that's so funny. I, that's so funny. I actually forgot that I, I used to do that. I would go out um, just like down the street and into an empty parking lot and like hand hammer um, <laughs> like my sheet metal on it. And it does give like a, a richer texture. Um, that's so funny. Yes, yes, I do do that. <laughs> I love that the answer is yes. So that's and there's, fantastic. And people, 
<laughs> and it's like it it rickish the noise just ricochets off of the building and right. I'm using like this huge hammer and people are like rushing over to see if things are okay it's, it definitely <laughs> causes a scene in the city for sure that's awesome you <laughs> weird art girl yeah exactly. <laughs> um since we're talking about texture do you want to show oh, us um, yeah. a couple more pieces with some of your favorite textures on them um yeah so this cuff is one of my newer pieces. Um, I'm kind of doing this like, like cross hatching. I'm trying to achieve this like, um, check, not check mark, like plus mark um, look on there. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of fun. Um, let me see. The inside of that looked pretty cool. What? what were oh, and what's that? The inside of that cup, was it like square bar he heavy? Um, yeah, I'm doing just like a really like thin um, framing. That's really mm -hmm. nice. Just like a li little bit. And then I love this texture, which I started doing earlier um, last year, which to me kind of symbolizes um, like lizard skin or like butterfly eggs, like that little, little <laughs> like dots. Love that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so Jennifer, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so can you tell us a little bit about, and also one, we absolutely have to see a little bit more alligator, <laughs> but can okay. you tell us a little bit about the, how you care for your concrete? And then also I was thinking about your pieces that have sort of alligator and concrete and sort of what, what is the care for that? So. <clears throat> I love that. The only thing you really have to do is for to because silver will tarnish everything gets sturdy. I use a four zero steel wool and I just um, brush it lightly and you can get it at any hardware store. Um, the concrete has a sealant on it. So you really don't have to do anything. Treat it like a pearl though, since it is porous. there's a sealant, but it's porous. So it's like the last thing on, first thing off, if you're putting lotions, potions, perfumes, and all that stuff. For the alligator skin, um, you know when you can get like an oil for a leather shoe? You just rub a little bit on to keep it moisturized so it doesn't dry out, and that's it. It's not bad. Now, at the last party, you showed us a pair of earrings that had, I think, pink alligator, and I couldn't find them on the website. Did I just not they're probably they're they're probably not on the website. Okay. If you, if anyone wants them, I got them. You just gotta, just gotta contact. I've just haven't photographed them yet. Um, so these are sterling hey, silver. Hand. I want them. <laughs> <laughs> so they're sterling silver with pink alligator skin. Um, they still are very lightweight. They really are really comfortable. And the post again is like here. So it sits a little higher, so it looks really nice, and it's and it's flat, so it's it's comfortable. So everything of mine is flat. So if you're old fashioned and talk on a phone, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you wanted to see I'll one more, here's a bracelet with some alligator skin. Love so that's that. a simple wrap, and that's like the type of bracelet I have on now. Just a concrete with alligator. Can I just give you a little bit of a plug because Jennifer and I did a Zoom session because those uh, pink concrete with the pink diamonds are mine and I can't wait to get them. But <laughs> it was so much fun working out what I wanted, how I wanted it and figuring out different possibilities. And Jennifer was great about coming up with a lot of options and well, I'm just really excited. You knew what you wanted. And I definitely said to her, no, for some things. <laughs> like I said, no, the stones are too big. We have to say, I, but you had a, I love this. I never would have put this together. So I love working with customers because mm -hmm. you guys give me ideas that I, that weren't, that wouldn't have been there before. So, and June's awesome. She's I'm going to love She's a cool pink, woman. I'm going to love the pink concrete on June's hair. That's well, that I know, I know. Yeah, these are great. Stay tuned. Love I'll these. wear them one of these days. <laughs> I'm so excited to see that. I love it. <laughs> Those are great. Those and, are great. Yeah, and I like the edginess, of course, of the wrap bracelets, like with that. Oh, wrap, that's fantastic. 
Yes. Sam, any other water. questions? That's, that's actually all I had written down. If you. I have other questions, but before I continue, I want to make sure I'm not um, monopolizing. If somebody has a question, I'm just going to be quiet for a second. Donnie. Go ahead. Dottie, you uh, have a question. Yes, uh, you had it up on the screen uh, to ask Tracy about her uh, bracelet. I'm interested ah. too. Okay, Tracy, one more time. Neat. Hi. <laughs> yeah, so I make these, the anodized aluminum bracelets with um, just uh, different colorways. But if you buy more than one, you can't, they easily match and it's I think it's so much fun wearing um wearing the, the, the multi colors so I first designed these with a clasp but you know I do wholesale as well so so the buyers were saying that I guess it wasn't easy enough so I just changed to an elastic and I think it you know snaps on the wrist um you know better and and then as Carla had me to do at the last part she had me to put on all the braces I had on my table. So, <laughs> so I, and, and plus with the necklace that I was wearing, you know, whatever necklace, you, if, if you, you know, purchase a necklace as well, I think it matches very well. You see how it luminous it looks. It, the anodized aluminum has a satin finish. And, you know, it's cold when you put it on, but it immediately adjusts to your body temperature. Yeah, you know, you're and then, and then I, I think there's one uh, size on the website, but if you want a larger size or a smaller size, then just email me and then I will make it for you. Yeah. What is the link between? Oh, it's brass. Okay. Yeah. Brass and, Daddy, and aluminum. I am Aunt Dottie, I am sure Tracy will do a consult. Like, so if you want to email in the chat your emails to each other, that seems like a match. Okay, I have to learn <laughs> how to I know chat. I'll I... match for the super stack. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know how to chat. <laughs> I am going to move it. Just, on. just email. I'm going to move it on to Danielle, who I have another question for, because sure. as you know, I'm a collector. But one of the things I love is how when you get your work, your beautiful presentations and how giftable it is, even though they're gifts to me. Um, tell me how you work with, with gifts, what you do specifically and what you would recommend as a gift. Mm, totally. Um, we love gifts. Sometimes we, we like internally talk about we don't make jewelry, we make reactions. And um, that helps like the people that work with me. And when I'm trying to like train someone on how to do gift draft, like, Part of this is like it's not an apple product but we do like take a lot of care with how we wrap things so if you order something online and you click you need to click gift wrap to get the whole shebang um but even if you get like a small something in the study ring category when you click gift it still feels very much like a very important thing and there's a lot of there's a lot of care taken in your in what we really want to be part of which is like you taking stopping time with this other person um and it's like cheaper to send flowers that to then to see cheaper to send like a small something than flowers. So like lean in guys, go for that bracelet. I love that. And before we move off you, just cause I like running yeah. the themes between the artists, show us something super stacked, stack something for us. Oh, um, can you help me out with that, Chris? Yeah, so um, our thin cuffs stack pretty well, but I'm gonna just heavy stack a pile of bracelets. Um, if I can do it fast enough. All right, so this is palm, peony, and then anemone all together. That'd be kind of a good yes. <laughs> You know Carla loves the super stack. <laughs> That's a good arm. And a Mirzada super stack, so the yes. Rest. <laughs> I sometimes wear a long chain with this too. So it's like, I could also layer this piece. But yeah, like I, I really love layering. We have um, some pieces in our collection that are extremely, extremely small. Like this is a very, very small slice of a diamond wrapped in 14 carats set on a white gold chain. Um, and we'll like scale from there up to these like very large art metal pieces. And I actually think that is one of my favorite layerings, a tiny, very elegant classic take, or like maybe modern take on a classic idea with 
something that really screams art jewelry all at the same time. I like the way you phrased that, screams art jewelry. I think everyone on this party can appreciate screaming art jewelry. Um, yeah. And sticking with that stack and the bracelet, I did say I was going to go back to Shane and she was going to show us some of her chunky, chunky, chunkiness, luscious chunkiness. And off from there. So these are, um, these are my one of a kind chunky um, sculptural cuffs and they're really showtime bracelets. Like they're so amazing, but they're also hollow. So they're really lightweight. So you can really just throw it on and be comfortable, but yet make a huge statement. And they really are like wearing a sculpture. You know, I'm, we know I'm a, I'm a frustrated sculptress, but since you are talking stacking, so I have been doing these, um, and I don't show them because I'm not, my, you know, I'm not used to showing off my smaller work. Mm -hmm. I always think it doesn't show as well on Zoom, but my clients love these. These are these little crescent uh, textured cuff bracelets and I have them set with diamonds and rubies. And then I like to stack them with other different versions. And then I have these just bangles. And of course, when I wear them, I put them all, I of course put them all on because why wouldn't you fill your wrist with fun jingle? <laughs> and they actually show really beautifully on Zoom. They're looking lovely. Do they? You know, I just, they always seem, you know, I do such large work, even though, um, and I wear this. I've been wearing these guys like every day this summer, not with the big one, but I've been wearing these like this wrist like every day. And I do it with um, these new, just like I've been stacking these high necklaces. So these are these pod chains. They must be. And they're super, like just super lovely, fun. And you know, I can do them in different, whichever color version. I kind of go back and forth between the silver and gold and the black and gold. And I sort of stack, I do this whole little, well, not the big one. Let's take that one cup off. That's overkill, sort of, maybe. Maybe. But yeah, like this is like a fun That's look a for me. Look. Yeah. Yeah. It's very elegant. It's fun. It's flirty. I love that. The, you, you know, I got the crescent earrings on. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's that's fantastic. And lastly, we are going to bring it back to Lisa. Unless anybody else has a question, I'll be quiet for a sec. Sam, did I miss anything? Nope. Okay, so we're going to bring it back to Lisa. Lisa, mm -hmm. your chains are known for being really sparkly. How and why? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little? I think it's um, a lot of the manufacturer that I choose to use. Um, you can get things that are really inexpensive. And they often say that sometimes you get what you pay for. Um, a lot of chains are made with round wire. So when the light hits a round surface, it's just a small little line that illuminates. The chains that I often choose to use are flat chains all the way around so that it has a whole flat surface for the light to hit. So an example of that would be this one right here. And I'm just going to dangle it so that you can actually see the light catch it. And if I put it up against my dress, you can see that there are these little barbells. So it's a fine flat chain, but it has little barbells that actually bring out a lot of the attention on that chain. This one's an 18 karat pink gold chain with um, oxidized sterling silver barbells on it. And you can see that it looks pretty substantial even though it's delicate. And then it's really beautiful if you just wear it up against a piece of clothing as well, if I can do that. So I do that. Um, another fine chain that I like to use is, let's see. So this one right here, the one that I use on my South American pendant is a beautiful flat anchor chain. And let's get something to show that off with. My dog just came up here and I think she was pushing this aside. So this is my flat anchor chain right here. And again, it just has a beautiful sparkle to it. And so when you have a substantial piece that you don't wanna take away from, you just want a beautiful, simple, sparkly chain, not, not something that's gonna take away from the actual piece that you're trying to show off. So there you go. Great thinking. Again, the minds of these extraordinary six artists, 
And if that's it for questions, I just want to thank everyone for spending time with us here and thank my artists for making me feel like such a privileged host. So thank you so much and enjoy your Saturday evening. Yeah. Stay cool. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hydrate. Thank you. For <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Great to see you all. Thanks for coming. Thanks.